Welcome to NCLEXPN exam practice test. Our topic today is immune, hematological. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. What is the primary cause of anemia in a client with chronic renal failure? A. Poor iron absorption. B. Destruction of red blood cells. C. Lack of intrinsic factor. D. Insufficient erythropoietin. The correct answer is D. Insufficient erythropoietin. Explanation. Insufficient erythropoietin production is the primary cause of anemia in a client with chronic renal failure. Poor iron absorption, destruction of red blood cells, and lack of intrinsic factor do not relate to the anemia seen in the client with chronic renal failure, therefore, they are incorrect. Number 2. When taking the client's dietary history, the nurse learns that the client has been skipping meals. The elimination of which food group has most likely contributed to the client's iron deficiency anemia? A. Milk. B. Meat. C. Fruit. D. Vegetables. The correct answer is B. Meat. Explanation. Omitting meat from the diet can cause iron deficiency anemia. Good food sources of iron include meat, fish, certain beans, iron-enriched cereals, whole grain products, and green leafy vegetables such as spinach. However, iron is more poorly absorbed from vegetables. Milk does not contain iron, but is a good source of calcium and protein. Likewise, most fruits do not contain large amounts of iron. Citrus fruits, however, aid in iron absorption and are good sources of potassium and vitamin C. Number 3. The nurse caring for a client with anemia recognizes which clinical manifestation is the one that is specific for a hemolytic type of anemia? A. Jaundice. B. Anorexia. C. Tachycardia. D. Fatigue. The correct answer is A. Jaundice. Explanation. In hemolytic anemia, the destruction of red blood cells causes the release of bilirubin, leading to the yellow hue of the skin. Tachycardia and fatigue occur with several anemias, but they are not specific to hemolytic. Anorexia does not relate to anemia. Number 4. The influenza vaccine cannot be given to clients in which age group? A. Less than 6 months of age. B. 6 to 23 months. C. 18 to 35 year old. D. Those over age 50. The correct answer is A less than 6 months of age. Explanation. The flu vaccine has not been found to be safe in children younger than 6 months, therefore, it is not recommended for them. It is especially important that the vaccine be given in the age groups in answers B and D, because they are high-risk groups. The age group in answer C is not a high-risk group, but flu vaccine administration is not contraindicated. Number 5. A client with AIDS is admitted for treatment of wasting syndrome. Which of the following dietary modifications can be used to compensate for the limited absorptive capability of the intestinal tract? A. Thoroughly cooking all foods. B. Offering yogurt and buttermilk between meals. C. Forcing fluids. D. Providing small, frequent meals. The correct answer is D. Providing small, frequent meals. Explanation. Providing small, frequent meals will improve the client's appetite and help reduce nausea. Answer A is incorrect, because it does not compensate for limited absorption. Foods and beverages containing live cultures are discouraged for the immune-compromised client, therefore, answer B is incorrect. Answer C is incorrect, because forcing fluids will not compensate for limited absorption of the intestine. Number 6. The client with varicella will most likely have an order for which category of medication? A. Antibiotics. B. Antipyretics. C. Antivirals. D. Anticoagulants. The correct answer is C. Antivirals. Explanation. Varicella is chickenpox. This herpes virus is treated with antiviral medications. The client is not treated with antibiotics or anticoagulants, so answers A and D are incorrect. The client might have a fever before the rash appears, but when the rash appears, the temperature is usually gone. Thus, answer B is incorrect. 
Number 7. A hospitalized client with severe anemia is to receive a unit of whole blood. Which facet of care is most appropriate for the newly licensed practical nurse? A. Initiating the IV of normal saline. B. Monitoring the client's vital signs. C. Initiating the blood transfusion. D. Notifying the physician of a reaction. The correct answer is B. Monitoring the client's vital signs. Explanation. The most appropriate facet of care for the newly licensed practical nurse is the monitoring of the client's vital signs. Answers A and C are incorrect, because initiation of IV fluids and blood is the responsibility of the registered nurse or the certified licensed practical nurse. Answer D is incorrect, because in the hospital setting, the registered nurse would be responsible for notifying the physician of a reaction. Number 8. The nurse notes that the client's mouth bleeds after brushing the teeth. When assisting the client with selecting foods from the menu, which food choice should the nurse suggest? A. Spaghetti with meatballs. B. Grilled cheese sandwich. C. Salad with French dressing. D. Creamed potato soup. The correct answer is D. Creamed potato soup. Explanation. Soft bland foods, such as creamed soups, cottage cheese, baked fish, macaroni and cheese, custard, and pudding, are recommended for clients with mouth ulcers. These types of foods help maintain nutrition and relieve oral discomfort. Spicy foods, such as spaghetti and French dressing, and coarse and irritating foods, grilled cheese sandwiches, are avoided. Number 9. The physician informs the client that phlebotomy is required and explains the procedure. Which symptom should the nurse recognize as a consequence of the client's polycythemia vera? A. Angina. B. Dyspepsia. C. Dysuria. D. Anorexia. The correct answer is A. Angina. Explanation. Angina, pain, or pressure in the chest, may occur as a result of inadequate blood flow and oxygenation to the heart caused by a thrombus in a coronary artery. Clots are more likely to form due to the thick nature of the circulating blood volume and the increased number of platelets as well as red and white blood cells. Indigestion, burning on urination, and loss of appetite should not be ignored by the nurse, but they are not commonly associated with polycythemia vera. Number 10. The nurse is completing an assessment history of a client with pernicious anemia. Which complaint differentiates pernicious anemia from other types of anemia? A. Difficulty in breathing after exertion. B. Numbness and tingling in the extremities. C. A faster than usual heart rate. D. Feelings of lightheadedness. The correct answer is B. Numbness and tingling in the extremities. Explanation. Numbness and tingling in the extremities are common in the client with pernicious anemia, but not those with other types of anemia. Answers A, C, D are incorrect because they are symptoms of all types of anemia. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.